On this week's programme, we head to Cork for the final of the McCarthy Insurance Group Cork Oaks. Then it's on to Shelburne Park for the quarterfinals of the Labrooks Open 600, plus Clamel for the semi-finals of the Red Mills Produce Stakes. We also pay a visit to trainer Peter Cronin at his kennels in County Kilkenny. of the weekend was Curraheen Park in Cork on Saturday night for the final of the McCarthy Insurance Group Cork Oaks with a winner's purse of €8,000. The ageless Ballymac Floss running from trap two was one of the joint favourites on the night along with late delivery in one and Moss End caught in three. All in in trap one, late delivery, two Bally McFloss, three Moss in Coich, and four Tara Footsteps, five Kilkenny Baby, and six is Starlet Rose. The hair now coming up behind the traps, and they're away. Quite a level start. Number five, oh, bump between five Kilkenny Baby and three Moss in Coich, but they still race to, to the bend together with number five showing the way. That's Kilkenny Baby leads into the far side. Kilkenny Baby by about three lengths, leading down the back from four. Tara Footsteps in second. Now the big finisher, late delivery, is starting to deliver. Moves up to challenge for second place as number five. Kilkenny Baby leads. Late delivery is finding it hard to get by Tyre Footsteps with off the final bend. It's five Kilkenny Baby going to win it. Kill number five Kilkenny Baby holds on to win it in style. Second is number one late delivery and third number four Tyre Footsteps. So Kilkenny Baby owned by Eileen Roach and Imelda Phelan does it nicely. They're a bump early on but led all the way to win it in good style. And the result of the McCarthy Insurance Group Cork Oaks final. The winner, number five, Kilkenny Baby. Brilliant style, this one winning, owned by Eileen Roach and Imelda Phelan, trained by James Roach. Second, number one, late delivery. And third, number four, Tara Footsteps. The time's a brilliant 28-38. Well, Imelda, this is a great night for you. She ran a stormer. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. Over the moon, delighted. We'd better herself at home, so. And have you a few more like her at home? I'm hoping to. We have two pups now. As the next litter coming on, so they look promising. And James, she won the consolation final of the Oaks last year. It was yeah. a fantastic effort That's on her right, part. Yeah. Ten to one, no chance. She had a very chance. Right, seven to no chance. You know. <laughs> and I suppose you're going to give it another challenge this year. I am. Yeah, she'll be on the old old Michelle. I like him up the other nights. <laughs> and she runs well. She runs the track well in Shelburne. Ah, she do, yeah, she do, yeah. She's three races, I think, one day. She runs well here in Shelburne. Well, she came out very fast tonight and she yeah, just held the lead. Early, yeah, she has good early, though. Know. She changed the rest in this year, but last year she was she great early on last year, though. Know. But she shot four or five lengths in the first spin to the third spin. She seems to have got that this year, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Might miss the as good, but... She stayed fairly well tonight. Yeah, she did. Look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she deserved to win something, though. Know. She was in England, like, she came on nearly two years ago, like. So she deserved to win something. So you're not going for the consolation of the Oaks this year, you're going for the final itself. I'll be, I'll be happy if I can get to the consolation again. I'll be very happy. Along with running a successful dairy business, Waterford man Peter Cronin decided to take out a trainer's licence and set up kennels on the Waterford-Kilkenny border. Peter, like many trainers before him, developed a love of the greyhound at a very early age. I would have started in greyhounds. My father would have had dogs, you know, for a long time. And in turn, he would have, he would have had dealings with Ronnie Chandler, who had, who had a lot of dogs at the time. And Ronnie was, you know, the man in the coursing field. And, um, you know, he picked up an awful lot from him. Uh, from that, uh, Michael O'Donovan then started to work for Ronnie, uh, who in turn would have, uh, would have shown me a lot about dogs. And Mike was brilliant on the course and field and brilliant. I won a derby and won a lot of classics on the, on the track as well as the course and field. Won six Waterloo Cups and so forth. So uh, from that then, um, I then w was with Mike for quite some time and I would have went down to Waterford here uh, where I started up a business uh, delivering milk and so forth uh, for a company here in Waterford about 12 years ago. Uh, during the course of that, after a couple of years, we started up another business called Dairyland Cuisine. Uh, from there, then I got back into the dogs again and uh, had a good few dogs at home uh, in my own place in Waterford. And now, this place here, I have, I have more dogs, probably 23, and to go to public licence then about two years ago. Uh, from that, I, um, one thing led to another, I suppose, I ran up the puppy derby, had a good few winners, uh, and you know, people just asked me where to take a dog, and I ended up anyway at the minute. I have 23 dogs in training. And uh, from the 23 I have in training, I have a lot of pups and saplings that I've bought or bought for on behalf of people. 
and if they're any good, then I'll bring them into the race in Kenning and see if they're any good from there, you know. Uh, and that's that's where we're at at the minute, you know. Peter has enjoyed much success on the track, and one of his favourites in the kennel is Dairyland Bandit. He was quite a good dog for me. Uh, ran up the puppy derby in Harold's Cross. He was beaten a link by Droopy's Brooklyn in the final, uh, and that was a big night for us. We were delighted with that. Well, off the final band is number one, Droopy's Brooklyn. Could this be a double for Ian Riley? He won it last year. He's won it again. Droopy's Brooklyn, the winner. Gary then battered the second. Uh, he, he, he won a couple of uh, open races throughout the country after that and subsequently went on to Mullingard only recently uh, won a heat at the, the Mullingard Cesarewich and unfortunately stumbled in the boxes in the second round. Uh, other than that, that actual track would have suited him down to the ground but he's been a great servant for us and, you know, he, when he finishes here he'll retire and stay here, you know. I have a couple of other bitches, a bitch then, O'Leary's Peggy who broke track record in Torless for me over 600. Uh, prior to that, she'd been in the final of the Tote Gold Collar in Harold's Cross and it run really well for us on the night short a little tad of early uh, she went to the final of the Puppy Oaks went to the final of the Southern Oaks in, in, in Yall and you know was a great servant for us throughout the year this year we're stepping her up to 750 and fingers crossed we're hoping that uh, 750 will be our trip you know the rest of the comrades seem to stay so we're hoping that, that she will uh, Paulo Coelho would have been the, the biggest dog I had he won six sprint stakes for me Paolo Coelho all the way here Paolo Coelho wins it from Staley Vegas in second number four run for miles is third but that's an impressive win for Paolo Coelho in a time of 17.60 broke track record in Cork over seven, over 3.30 uh, done 17.40 in the semi-final went on to win the final brilliant dog he's at stud now uh, and so you know we've had a few goodish dogs throughout that we've had a lot of we've a lot of young dogs now coming on for next year uh, fingers crossed hopefully they'd be good enough um, and They've won their first race out, you know, three or four of them. So we're hoping that they'll go on from there, you know. The way we do it here uh, with the pups is that, I, you know, if I see a good pup, I might buy it. I might buy it on behalf of the syndicate or I might buy it myself. We, don't, we, we actually have one Burbridge going to breed for us, ourselves, Dairyland Sue. She won the Northern uh, Oaks in England. She won the, the Midland Puppy Oaks Derby. Uh, and she, uh, she won the Racing Post International. Uh, she was a bitch that I sent to England. Uh, she was a quality bitch now and she's back here to breed and she's actually in pup to token prince uh, so we're hoping to have pups off her shortly but that'll be the first bitch that I've bred off um, but other than that I buy some pups that I like, I bring them along and you know we, we, we have a good operation there the way we feed them and the way we give them everything the best uh, we have a nice little set up there with a, a circular sort of thing and um, there are six paddocks there and they have 360 degree of a turn all the way around and it's about 300 yards in, 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 in length uh, and so we gallop them there every day uh, and, and feed them accordingly. And then when they're 12 months old, we bring them along. Uh, and that's that's really where we're at. And if we can keep doing that and hopefully uh, try and stumble across a dog that's good enough to run on a Saturday night in Shelburne, you know. And that's the, that's the ultimate. I'm fortunate enough to have help here because, um, I, 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 as you can see, I'd need all the help I can get. Fortunate enough, I have a girl that works with me, Teresa, who works with me uh, all week long. And uh, she's very good with the dogs, and uh, she's qualified in dog husbandry and so forth like that. So she's quite good with them, um, and interacts really well with the dogs. So that's a benefit to me. And um, also, I have a chap here locally, Seamus Cairns, who gives me a hand with the dogs, and he's very good. He steps in on the weekends and that, and and, and helps me to school him and go racing and so forth like that. So I'm fortunate enough to have them to give me a hand with them, and 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 they're very loyal. And, and whatever set out to, do, to be to be done, it's done. You know, and you know if that box is ticked, that it's it's been done. You know, and it gives me. Uh, clear indication as, as, as to what we were going, you know. I have, uh, I have a nice young dog uh, this year now, uh, Dairyland Joe is his name. Uh, he's an Arkill Joe dog, uh, nice strapping 78 pound black dog. Uh, he won for me first time in Thorless, stumbled in the boxes, came from last to first in 1957, which is quite good for a pup first time out. We brought him back down a week later to Waterford and he won in 16.10, which is quite a good, about a length and a half of the, t of the clock there. And we brought him back down to Cork the week after that, and he won an open for us in 1777, uh, out of trap one, which is a difficult enough thing to do in Cork for a pup, you know. So we're quite pleased with him. He's won his first three races. So we've kind of tucked him away at a minute, and we'll, we'll play it by year. But we're hoping, like, 5 to 5 is probably as far as he go, but uh, certainly he'd be a hard dog to be laid uh, throughout the year, you know. So we're hoping, very hoping for him. Uh, I, have, I have another dog there, Jet Hart Pal is his name. He's won his first two, he won his first race in 2870 in Waterford. And he's also came along then and won a 550 a couple of weeks later in 29.97, which is quite good running for a pup. Now, unfortunately, in his third race, he split his web 
uh, either at the boxes or whatever, but he's, he, he's pretty wavy. He's a nice Brett Lee dog, but he's only about 62 or 3 pounds. Uh, but having said that, he, he can, with the 63 pounds that's there, he can use it. So we're hoping for him this year that he'll be quite good. Coincidentally, I have a sister of his then. She's Brett Lee again. She's Jet Hart Suntan. She's won a couple of races. She won four of her six races. Uh, she won a couple of weeks ago in 2881 in Waterford. And she looks like a big prospect for most of the bitch stakes this year, most of the puppy stakes. Um, so we'll hopefully put her on the puppy oaks this year and maybe we might go a bit better, you know. Since I've been little, I've had dogs, and I, mean, I suppose the same with horses or any animals. I mean, you know, uh, why does anyone get up in the morning to do these things? I mean, you'd have to love them, and, and it's for that, you know. Um, you know, I probably have a lot of dogs that are right, but having said that, it keeps me busy and it keeps me fit. And outside of that, the business is, is, is grand, it's there, it's, you know, we've set it up and whatever, and we're busy with it. But outside of that, uh, you need to get out and clear the head and get involved in dogs, sort of thing for me, does it for me. Other people it could be golf or whatever the case may be, but for me it's it's the greyhounds and the buzz of it, you know. of the Labrook 600 attracted much of the attention at Shelburne Park last Saturday night. This competition has a tradition of throwing up some sizzling performances. It was Wine Tavern Oscar that grabbed the limelight in the opening round, coming home just five spots off the track record. But it's Wine Tavern Oscar, the favourite, up the straight, number four, Wine Tavern Oscar. He wins it in very, very impressively on the line, number four, Wine Tavern Oscar, the winner. And last year's winner, Satellite Flight, was back to defend his title. Here they go, and away they go, and it's like a shot as well away, so is Satellite Flight, and Satellite Flight is leading to the man from like a shot. One historic moment is very well positioned, but it's Satellite Flight clears the man. Big challenge now by like a shot. This could be a tremendous buckle. It's five Satellite Flight, six like a shot going up his inside. They're into the third bend, and like a shot is just having to check as five Satellite Flight has a length advantage over six like a shot. Will five drift wide out the last bend? It's five Satellite Flight, six like a shot. Oh, what a race between them, but Satellite Flight takes it. Number five, Satellite Flight wins it. Six like a shot is second. One historic moment is third. An absolutely epic contest. The time, 32.52. We now join the boys in Shelburne Park for the quarterfinals of the Ladbrokes 600. In the opening heat, the betting suggested that three rocks on boy and five Westmead Eagle were the ones to beat. But also watch out for two, Volcano Joe. Here behind traps, and they're away. Number three out well, that's Roxon Boy leading up to the corner with two, Volcano Joe and one, Kenstown Roddy. Five, Westmead Eagle is very close around the opening bend, and it's three, Roxon Boy, but there goes five. Westmead Eagle challenging on the outside. A great battle down the far side, but Westmead Eagle now goes on by just about a length from three, Roxon Boy in second. Two, Volcano Joe showing big pace in third, and six, Jamara Nikita running on. Final bend, and it's five. Westmead Eagle gone on by a couple of lengths from three. Rocks on boy. Six is staying on for third. Jamara Nikita. It's number five. Westmead Eagle, an impressive winner here of this opening gate. The time 32 41. Only five lined out in heat two with Trap two, Shelburne Civic, a non runner. Group Rooster in four, and Tyro Ted in Trap five dominated the betting. The early stages were going to play a vital part in proceedings. Four and five, very much the favourites here now behind traps. They're away, Tyre Ted is off to a flyer. It's number five, Tyre Ted leads up. Three great ovation going up well on the inside and one Honda dog. But Tyre Ted takes the corner and Group Rooster is knocked over on the bend and takes a very bad fall and is injured and badly injured and down the far side. It's number five, Tyre Ted, gun clear. Number one, Honda Dub, running a fine race in second. But it's five, Tyre Ted stretching the advantage now from one Honda Dub. Unfortunately, Group Rooster is badly injured, carried off the track and Tyre Ted races away to win it. Number five, Tyre Ted, he's certainly back. He wins this one impressively. Second is number one, Honda Dub. And third, number six, Yates Kingdom. The time, 32.43. Well, a very bad scene there as we see Group Rooster, last year's Consolation Derby winner, 
one of the best greyhounds in training, being carried off the track. That's trainer Noel Mullins with him. A very, very unfortunate accident. There's trainer Paul Hennessy also helping out now, taking over the lifting. Paul, of course, who trained the winner of the race, Tyrer Ted. But a very, very sad occasion here. A sad scene as Group Rooster carried off. It does look as if he has broken a leg. As we see the incident on the first bend, takes a terrible tumble there. He came into a bump with three great ovation, and he really tumbled badly. And it looks as though that could be the end of the racing career for Group Rooster. There were also five runners in heat three, with one, Amadis Laura, not taking her place. In her absence, trap two, Farlow Hobbs looked to have a clear run on the inside, and he started a warm favourite, though five, Tyro Kitten, and six, Satellite Flight, were also expected to play a part. The hot favourite is in two, Farlow Hobbs, here behind traps. And he's away well, they're all away quite well. It's two Farlow Hobbs on the inside, three going up well, hello Thomas, four Red Barn Panther, and five Tyre Kitten, they're all very much involved. On the bend, number two leads, that's Farlow Hobbs from three, hello Thomas, four Red Barn Panther, and five Tyre Kitten beginning to motor down the far side. But two Farlow Hobbs has gone clear from three, hello Thomas, Tyre Kitten now moves into second, big finisher, but the dog out front, he stays. It's Farlow Hobbs in front, but the Kitten is closing rapidly off the final bend, and here comes Tyre Kitten, number five, challenge number two Farlow Hobbs and the kitten gets up it's number five Tara Kitten wins it second number two Farlow Hobbs and third number four Red Barn Panther the time 32-67 a fine run as with heats two and three only five lined out in the final heat Trap 2, Wine Tavern Oscar, was a red-hot favourite following a sensational run in the opening round. His main rivals were four dead set and three Antrim Classic. Here coming up behind Traps, the favourites two, Wine Tavern Oscar. Away to go, he's away quite well. It's three to Antrim Classic, leading out with six on the outside. Go Jack, two, Wine Tavern Oscar going up on the inside. Into the corner, two and four. Two is Wine Tavern Oscar, four dead set, and Oscar leads. The hot favourite leads into the back straight. Wine Tavern Oscar from four dead set in second. Then comes one, Shelburne K, the big finisher. Onto the third bend with two. That's Wine Tavern Oscar from four dead set in second. One, Shelburne K is next, and three, Antrim Classic is rallying. But off the final bend, it's number two, Wine Tavern Oscar. Another big run from the star tracker comes to the line he takes it number two the winner it's mighty close for second between three and four a photo finish there but wine tavern oscar another powerful run the time 32 50. well there you have it we've seen the quarterfinals of the labrooks 600 for 2006 join us next week for the semi-finals of course the big two still there tyro ted and wine tavern oscar we take a look now at some other upcoming fixtures. On Thursday night of this week, the Gillian Brown A2525 and the Fat Cats Puppy 525 gets underway at Mullingar. Limerick hosts a benefit night in aid of the Kuna Development Association to include the final of the Ennis Road Motors Open 700. The TR Motors winner of 2570 reaches the semi-final stage at Harl's Cross on Friday night. And in Galway on that night, the €20,000 John Morris Bookmakers A1525 gets underway. Lifford Stadium are inviting entries for the €63,000 Northwest Derby, the most prestigious competition run over 550 yards. <laughs> Our final venue over the weekend was Clawmel on Sunday night for the semi-finals of the Red Mills two-year-old Produce State Classic, carrying a total prize fund of €52,000. We join Graham Temple for the action. And the Hares running for the first semi-final of the Red Mills Produce Stakes in one Ardbeg Spark and two Express Comet and three Ardkill Jamie and four Large Mac and five Jeff Star and in six Doc Cash Diego. The hot favourites in three Ardkill Jamie. Hair up behind traps. And away they go, and five away very well on the outside. Jeff Starr showing some lovely early leads by a couple. Here's four with a run in second. There's plenty of crowding in behind, but five. Jeff Starr for Jim Griffin leads by about three lengths from four. Large Mark, a big run in second. Here's six. Dalcash Diego also nicely positioned to qualify for the final. They hit the second last bend. Jeff Starr still leads by a length and a half from four in second. Large Mac, six is still there. Dalcash Diego in third. The favourites in trouble and out of it. The turn for the judge. Jeff Starr sticks it out well to win in style. Four large Large Mac for second, six. Dalcash Diego qualifies in third. The time a quick 28.66. The result of the first semi final first number five, Jeff Starr, owned by Tony Griffin and trained by Jim Griffin. Second number four, Large Mac. And third number six, Dalcash Diego. The time 28.66. Well, Jim, that was a fantastic run there. He broke really well. Oh, yeah, he, he's just coming into his own now. I don't know how this is. 
he had his traps tonight and everything went right for us. So this is a real family affair. Tony, you own the dog? I do, thanks be to God. Um, what can I say about him? He's just getting better every race. I find that uh, he's getting used to this track. When he came here first, his first one around it. I think he done 29, 12, then he done 28, 80, something, and now he's 28, 66 tonight. It's just getting better. Your dad said he had the right trap tonight. Is that what you're looking for in the final? I'd like six. I'd like six. But even though five would suit him, because he's coming out well, and whoever's outside him, if he's in five, well, they're going to have to fight for the bin with him because he'll go out. If he's in five, you out. And the hair's running for the second semi final. In one, she's a diva, and two, Jack Shea Boy, and three, Nutcracker, and four, Calm Honcho, and five, Select the Sun, and in six, the hot favourite, Eskimo Jack. Hair up behind traps. And they hit the lids and four calm Honcho away well, but he takes a bump after leaving traps. Two leads. Jack Shea Boy into the first leads by two. Here's three with a run. Nutcracker in second. Eskimo Jack is there in third and five. Back and forth. That's Select the Sun. They stretch down the back. It's two. Jack Shea Boy still leads by a length and a half. But here's three. Nutcracker with a big run on the outside. He comes to challenge. Two finds more. Jack Shea Boy leads. Three. Nutcracker. More to give in second and six. Eskimo Jack, the favourite, finishing strongly as is five on the inside. But three. Nutcracker comes through to win in style. Two Jack Shea Boy for second. Six Eskimo Jack qualifies in third. The time, 28.95. The result of the second semi-final. First number three, Nutcracker, owned by Podrick Horgan and Cork, trained by Owen McKenna. Second number two, Jack Shea Boy. And third number six, Eskimo Jack. The time, 28.95. Nutcracker, he, he ran a great race there. He did. <laughs> Surprised us all. Um, he was sort of a last-minute decision put him into the competition and he's the only one left so it's great to be in the final again So you had three tonight, what are you hoping for next week? It's the same again I do and he, like, he's great to be in the final for the lads and he, I tell you he's well named Nutcracker, he barks the whole day long and I said to him, I said I keep running him in Clonmel because there's only in the road and <laughs> but uh, no it's great like so just great to be in the final the trap draw for the final of the Red Mills Produce Stakes was made by Mr. John Gagan of Red Mills. It has resulted as follows. In one, Large Mac. In two, Nutcracker. In three, Jack Shea Boy. Then we have the three wide seeds. In four, Jeff Starr. In five, Dalcash Diego. And in six, Eskimo Jack. Well, a fantastic 28.66 clock by Jeff Starr in the semi-finals there. Connections won't be happy with the draw in the final, however. Eskimo Jack in trap six looks the best drawn in the race for me. Francie Murray's charge has to have a big chance from six. Large Mac is another one that could be a fly in the ointment from one has some very decent form around Clonmel he also may be well drawn it promises to be a fantastic night at Clonmel next Sunday the 30th of April they all are there with a chance we'll have all the action from the final night of the Red Mills Produce Stakes for you next week along with the semi-finals of the Cox Cup from Newbridge and those of the Labrooks Open 600 from Shelburne Park for a complete fixtures list and more information, log on to the Irish Greyhound website at www.igb.ie.